uh, yeah so we will be looking at the fundamentals of web development this is such a big topic right uh, this is like an ocean and there is no way anybody can cover this in a day there is no way anybody can learn everything in a day it took people 20 or 30 years to master uh, web and people are still doing it so it's not possible at all but the ultimate aim is to like give an introductory to this wide ocean so that everybody gets interested and you guys start exploring this much and get yourself a job uh, that uh, that uh, that's that's been a dream for you guys for uh, so many years so that would be the ultimate uh, aim of this to like to ignite the fire uh, rather than covering up the entire ocean to like probably um, let you guys know that this is ocean and these are all like these are all the drops of it so that's that would be the aim of it so as i said earlier uh, keep asking questions as i go uh, i can pro i can sometimes go fast but then yeah i'll uh, i'll make sure that i answer every question at the end so uh, before uh, starting, I'll probably give a very brief introduction. Um, uh, like Annie said, I have been uh, at Freshworks for three and a half years. I joined there as a as a, as a graduate. Uh, so um, I have been working in uh, as a full stack engineer. I started my career as a front end engineer uh, with Vue.js, but uh, I also like started working in um backend systems with node rails uh etc so i'm pretty much doing full stack uh, these days so i also have worked with uh, tools like uh, devops tools like jenkins aws docker so i pretty much uh, have uh, around four years experience with all these tools so uh, trying to like still trying to learn a lot uh, on all this so i am based out of chennai apart from coding uh, from on the weekdays i like try to play badminton and stay fit sometimes over the weekends and that's pretty much it i don't want to bore you guys more yeah so i'll probably move on to the agenda of today so what we are going to do is uh, i don't want this session to be uh, throwing definitions on you guys, there are so many jargons in the web development. There are so many jargons in the software development in general. I don't want to throw those definitions and call it a webinar. Uh, so that's not what we are going to do. We are trying to, we are going to build an application or rather walk through an application that is already built. So I already have a sample application, full stack application that I've already built. We are trying to um, do all the steps uh, a software company will do to build a software, right? So there is a software development life cycle from uh, requirements gathering to uh, release to customers, generally available to customers as they call. There is a life cycle. We are trying to uh, do it in small scale and try to learn uh, the ins and outs of full stack development. So that's what uh, we are going to do. So uh, this will mostly be uh, hands-on code walkthrough sessions. Um, uh, so I think uh, uh, people who who hate, who have pet peeves for definitions just like me won't find this boring, uh, is what I assume. Yeah. So first, we will gather requirements for a simple to-do application. So what better way? than to build a to-do application. So to-do is like the hello world of uh, uh, programming. Uh, to-do to do is uh, to web like hello world to the programming languages. If you if you try to uh, learn a program language, you start with hello world, right? So similarly, you build a to-do application because it, uh, it is like, uh, it basically helps you like understand uh, all the crude operations that you can do on uh, on the database so it's pretty much uh, a good uh, way to start off with uh, how a, a full stack app is built from start to end so first we'll try to gather requirements for it 
probably very simple apps, not going to be, there are, there are uh, full-fledged solutions like Trello. We are trying to, we are going to build a very, very simple app that's going to do the purpose for us, which is like to um, just get an introductory, right? So after gathering requirements, we are going to design the database schema and the API requirements for it. We are going to choose the tech stack. We are going to develop API or rather, walk through the development that I did. We are going to do UX, UI design and develop that as well. And we'll be discussing about the takeaways from the session. So this is what we are going to do. Yeah. So requirements, yeah, you guys, uh, uh, would have seen a lot of to do applications if if you if some of I, I hope some of you guys already are experienced in building simple web apps so uh, you know how how um, it is uh, how, how this app is very popular so you you might have seen n number of versions for this uh, to do uh, use case right so functional uh, functional requirements would be you uh, a user ha user should be able to list to dos and they should also be able to create, uh, update, delete uh, their uh, list of totals. So this is like, these are the very basic functional requirements. Uh, for the non-CS uh, guys, functional, uh, uh, any software has two types of requirements. One is the functional, one is the non-functional. Functional, um, I think the terms itself or self-explanatory. Functional uh, means what the application is going to do, how it is going to help the customer or the end user. Non-functional is how it is going to enhance the experience of uh, using it, right? So um, in other terms, implicit requirements and explicit requirements. So the functional requirements are going to be listing the to-dos and able to create, update, and delete their to-dos. Non-functional requirements are going to be basic uh, security. Obviously, since it's going to be user specific, um, uh, user A should not be able to view view user B's to do because it's uh, it's completely uh, other other person's data. So uh, it has to it has to ensure basic security. The user experience has to be intuitive to some extent, and the code has to be maintainable and scalable. So there could be many more functional and non-functional requirements added to it, but this is what we are going to go with. Right. So um, uh, once uh, I have set the functional requirements, some of you guys should have started uh, um, um, thinking about how the system would look. So this part, after gathering the requirements, any industry, any software company would do system design, right? So it will basically uh, uh, try to analyze what uh, what system, how the system will look, how, what are all the systems that are going to interact with each other in the distributed system uh, structure, and how the what database to go with, whether it is relational database or uh, uh, NoSQL, uh, like MongoDB, for example whether the data is structured or not. So all these uh, um, um, discussions come once the requirements are clear from the product manager. So here we don't have a product manager since it's, it's a very simple application, but this is what are the requirements. Now we can try to uh, first uh, try to um, decide what database we need. So this, uh, this is very straightforward data, right? It's not going to store complex data. It's not big data. It's not going to like uh, store uh, unsorted data or uh, data that uh, demands uh, no SQL, right? So it's going to be relational deep databases. And what better uh, uh, relational database does, than to go with MySQL? So we can now start designing the database schema with MySQL uh, relational database schema, right? Now we have, uh, uh, if you see here, we have two, two persona or persona or two entity, two main uh, pillars. One is the user, another is the to-do. So 
we come we usually come up with something called as uh, entity relationship diagram again this is very textbook specific for c this would be very textbook uh, uh, specific for cs students for non cs students basically after you gather the requirements you come up with a diagram called entity relationship diagram right this is where you define which entity um, uh, communicates with which entity so you you collect all the entities from the requirements you um, define the relations between each entities so um yeah here our main two main entities are user and to do uh, rohit singh i just saw you raise hand i'll probably be done with this and get take your question so uh, here there are two uh, main entities one is user another is to do right uh here the user uh, uses uh, the to do app user creates it reads it updates it deletes it. so here in this uh, section we usually tell what relation this mostly would be verb right user creates to do user user reads to do user updates to do, user deletes to do uh, i just gave a, a, an umbrella term called user uses to do and um, we also define what relation is this whether uh, it is one to one one to many many to one or many to many in this case uh, one user can create as many to do's as possible can update as many to do's as possible and so on right so this relation is going to be one sorry this relation is going to be one to n or one to many so this is how you uh, define the entities and um, define the relation between those those two those entities here this is a very simple app you just have two entities here in a in a rather uh, industrial application you will have 50 entities 100 entities based on the um, based on the pro product size right so you um, you should have a mental model of this er diagram to design your system better so this would be the starting point of how to design your system um uh, i can probably take questions now i see seven chats if what's the difference um uh, between uh, back end and front end lot of database required okay okay so habib ayan uh, has asked what's the difference between front end and back end guys can you can you all uh, ask questions uh, pointing to everyone in meeting so that everyone else can um, get the answers right so i just saw a few uh, questions to dm instead you can just ask uh, uh, miss ask uh, questions to everyone so to answer habib's question um front end and back end difference right so i think uh, when i complete this you should be clear about it or else i can take that question again so yeah i don't think does this webinar provides it okay i don't think any other questions to answer now so i'll just proceed so these two entities have these parameters or arguments right or attributes so this user is how, how this entity is defined how is it identified user has a email and password mapped to it mapped to the, mapped to that entity and to do has title description and whether it is whether the to do is completed or not so these are all attributes of these entities so these uh, from your er diagram your entities will become tables your attributes will become columns of the tables so uh, if you are designing a db you first uh, come up with er diagram convert your uh, entities to tables and uh, your attributes to um, columns for the tables so i will quickly show you the db schema now i have a db called user uh, to do's db right with two tables one is users and another is to do's uh first i will uh show the definition of users 
here i have uh, id email password and created it so if you compare it uh, with this it has email and password as attributes and these are these two are columns here with type tracker and id would be the primary key of the user right so users uh, unique identifier is id here and you obviously have created it to keep track when that user is created so these are all these are the four uh, columns for user state and you have to do to do has title description and completed as its arguments right or um, yeah attributes so here i am showing the to do structure if you see, if you see here uh, it has title description completed so title is going to be varchar description is going to be varchar and completed is going to be boolean so boolean uh, you can use boolean uh, in mysql you can also use tinyint tinyint will store one bit so whether it is one or zero right with this you can uh, refer whether the, whether it is whether the task to do task is completed or not the title going to uh, say the title of to do description is going to describe a little more about the to do and completed is going to say whether it is completed or not and then there are there are created at and updated at which is going to be uh, um, updated uh, every time you update the update, update the table right so yeah uh everything is okay id is there uh that is uh, this is uh, id is very specific to to do's id is the primary key of to do's everything is fine here but what is this user id um yeah so if you see here there is a relation between user and to do one to many relation right so you have to have user id uh referenced from users table here as a column so in users table id is primary key in to do table user id is foreign key so foreign key as in foreign key has to be a primary key in some other table so when you make a primary key of one table foreign key in another table you are creating a relationship between these two tables right so i just have user id in to do table as a foreign key so now if you see um uh, uh, this relation will make sense a uh, one user can have as many to dos as possible right so um this is going to be unique and a user can have multiple to dos mapped to it so this is how the tables are designed any doubts with this so this is basically sql pro this is a mysql client you can so you can also log in to mysql from terminal and this is just a uh, client for mysql okay so what is the difference between web developer and web designer okay uh again um this will be covered in the session but i am just going to answer it in one line a web designer comes up with the design the entire user experience of a web application how uh, for example facebook a web designer will tell facebook will have these buttons in these colors uh the interaction will be like this the login button will be here that's all they will just design it using tools like figma or and a web developer converts the design into a working application that the user can interact with yeah so which again which tool are you using for database this is sql pro um, uh there are so many mysql clients okay so this is just a user user interface for mysql mysql is actually uh, a server so this is actually user interface for mysql i think i am uh, i am sure there aren't any questions specific to tb schema design anyone muttu selam can you can you ask 
you can also ask in ask in voice i am hoping okay why tiny in instead of character or byte is there any size difference yeah tiny int is actually the um, uh it's it's similar to character it actually takes one byte so anything that uh, um, that uh, anything that is uh, representing boolean you can use you, there is also a data type called bool boolean yeah so this will take true or false i prefer to use tiny int it will either take zero or one how to connect database into sql Okay, so how to connect database into SQL? Uh, I don't think I got the question. Are you asking how this application is run? Uh, Kumaraya, can you can you confirm that question? Okay. Okay. So uh, probably I'll take one more question and then I'll move on. So for a better product, can front end and back end be done simultaneously, or we first design front end and then back end be done after? So mostly uh, the core of any software uh, system is its back end, right? So that's where the data is stored. That's where you store the data. You manipulate the data. You you have the data in eight of the customer. So it's always better every, uh, and also every software company follows um, this. They design the backend systems first. They design how the distributed systems will look, whether there is some, uh, whether that it will be one single monolithic system or it's going to be distributed systems. So, they are. Uh, they will first design the backend system with the uh, with all the DB schema designed and everything. And once everything is done, once the API contract is ready, they will work on the front end. But uh, companies also follow agile methodologies, agile uh, uh, work methodologies, where all these will go simultaneously. So a waterfall model is developing something for six months and then um, releasing it in one go that is waterfall software lifecycle model but companies today follow agile where they do continuous integration and continuous deployment CICD as they call it so where they simultaneously build uh, they design they build and they deliver in very small chunks if the product is 100 percentage they will deliver two or three percentage every two weeks or every one month, right? So they will keep uh, designing the uh, backend. Once the back, uh, while building the backend itself, backend guys will give the API contract to frontend. Frontend guys will start the work for frontend application. So everything uh, will go parallelly. This is uh, called the agile uh, software methodology. You can read more about it. Thing is asking how the database uh, is connected to the web page. Yeah, I will show that uh, in the uh, code walkthrough or the application walkthrough. Yeah. I think I'll okay. I'll just take one more question and then resume. What is it about non-SQL like MongoDB? So MongoDB usually stores unstructured data, right? You can store a uh, uh, large amount of data without any data type, right? You can store JSONs, you can, st uh, JSON is nothing but JavaScript object notation, where it will have all the data types in it. So those kind of unstructured data are stored in uh, NoSQL um, uh, tools like MongoDB. So for this use case, it is MySQL should be enough. Yeah, I will continue with this. Um, um, there are many questions that are coming up. I'll probably pick it up uh, once the session is done. 
So this is our DB design. Once this is done, uh, that is the tables are created. So uh, table create uh, query will be uh, like this. Insert uh, create table, table name. I think uh, all these are uh, like you can, these are all very basic MySQL queries. You should be able to find this uh, in any uh, online platform like W3 schools or et cetera. So you create table like this, uh, create table, table name, and then with all the column name, you will um, you will uh, create the table. Like for example, so this is how this um, tables create syntax looks. Play table, table name, all the columns, and yeah. So to, to insert a record, you will have insert into uh, table name values. So I, I hope these queries are all very common. Most of you guys should be aware of it uh, if you are from CS background. But yeah, if, uh, these are all uh, these are all the uh, basic MySQL queries: create, insert, select. So create is to create a table. Uh, that's also a command called create database database name, which creates a database. Database is nothing but a collection of tables, right? So you can also alter table. Uh, you can change the structure of the table using alter table. Um, you can update a row. So this is a row. This one is one. Uh, uh, this uh, this one thing is a row, and these are all columns. ID, user ID, titles are all columns. So you can update uh, uh, update a row. You can update individual co columns in it. You can update title alone here. I prefer coffee for guests at 5 p.m. Like for example. So this will be updated. So in the background, um, MySQL, this MySQL SQL Pro runs this query only to update it, right? So I am not diving deep into these queries. I hope everyone has basic idea about it and they'll uh, make sure to uh, go through, go, go more deep into it. So moving on, it's stack. So, um, now we have requirements ready. We have uh, our, uh, uh, now we have our requirements ready. We have our DB schema ready. Now we will um, decide upon which technological stack to use, right? So for this, we have N number of options. We have so many programming languages today. Uh, there, are, there is a common question on Quora, which programming language to learn in 2022, which programming language to learn in 2020. I have seen these questions uh, being asked so many times. So um, um, once you know that, once you learn software uh, development, once you, uh, once you actually work in an industrial uh, background, you will come to know that programming language doesn't matter. You just have to learn the basics. You just have to learn the core very well and you can just adapt to any programming language whether it is python java javascript so it doesn't matter actually so um so it all uh, it, if there are uh, one pros in one there is going to be cons in another, cons in one and it's going to be, it's, it's always going to have pros and cons in any programming language so you just have to analyze which suits you best so as I said, we are going to uh, build an application with Node.js, MySQL, and uh, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Uh, you guys know JavaScript, uh, probably uh, not vanilla JavaScript. Vanilla JavaScript, vanilla actually uh, is an English word that means plain, right? So vanilla ice cream means no flavor. Uh, so uh, vanilla JavaScript refers to pure JavaScript without any frameworks. I hope you guys are uh, you guys have heard uh, framework uh, frameworks like Angular, React, and Vue.js, right? So these are all JavaScript frameworks that makes the front end development easier. Vanilla JavaScript is when you don't use any framework and build it uh, just with uh, just with the uh, pure code, uh, pure JavaScript uh, uh, help. So that is vanilla JavaScript. So that's with this one we are going to build uh, our application. So for once this is done, once the tech stack is decided, 
we have a, any organization will come up with a system architecture how the systems will interact with each other so our system uh, since it's very simple uh, the architecture diagram is only this but usually the architecture diagram should be massive given there will be multiple systems that interact with each other so in our case uh, we have a node server node js server uh, sorry that will interact with the mysql database so this uh, this block is going to be our api layer and then this is our vanilla js uh, single page application i will come back to single page application uh, uh, telling what it is but uh, this single page application is going to be run in the browser so this browser is going to interact uh, going to interact with the node uh, with the server with the api layer through something called as rest api calls rest api means representational state transfer api api is abbreviation is application program interface so i i think you guys would have heard about this term or even know about it but i'll give a brief uh, about what api is api consider api like a bridge between your front end and back end right back end here refers to the data layer the data layer here is the database database is where the data is going to store going to be stored right so your api is going to be like a bridge that communicate that communicates with your database and come and tells it tells it back to the front end front end here is it here it is the application that is going to be run in the browser but do we have only browser applications uh, meaning do we have only web applications we also have android apps we also have ios apps right so uh, this architecture is very popular because you write your business logic you write your uh, data manipulation business logic only once and uh, it, it it will be in the form of apis and you are going to consume those apis in all the clients client here refers to where we uh, user interface is going to be run uh, whether it is in web browser whether it is in android Uh, mobile whether it is an ios mobile or whether it is going to be a desktop application native right so these are all the types of applications and your application all your applications can consume one single api so for for example youtube you have web application android application ios application so uh, what they would have done is they would have uh, developed a single data layer or single api layer and let all the clients consume the api layer so this way you are not rewriting the same thing again and again so this is called as api driven development so with api driven development you write your business logic once and all the clients consume from that apis so you just have to take care of writing the code for clients ui and you write the apis once right so this uh, yeah as i said one server multiple clients multiple clients can communicate with that one server so that is how the modern uh, technology is developed one single application is run in multiple instances and everything communicates with one server so i told about single page application um uh, i will just give a brief about this and again i will explain that when i do a walk through so single usually there were the, in the in the previously there there were applications that are multiple pages if you see wikipedia every wikipedia page is a single page which is rendered from the server right so if you search for for example if you search for virat kohli virat kohli is wikipedia page if you request it it goes to the server and server sends back the response so every page every single wikipedia page is a uh, one one page in wikipedia server and every time you request a new page it, the request will reach the server so this is multi page application but a uh, single page application is you will only have one page only once the request will reach the server for getting the uh, ui 
and all the other requests will directly go to the API layer. And API layer, you can just get the data for that particular uh, section and you can uh, change it. You can change parts of the data. So this is called a single page application. I think I am not making more sense now, but as I go, I will make I I you guys will be clear about it. So yeah. So with the architecture diagram, uh, uh, we will be moving on to the API design and development. Now we have the database ready, we have the tech stack decided, we have the architecture ready. Now we need to know what are all the APIs that we are going to design and develop, right? So um, if consider APIs, uh, uh, so APIs, uh, as I said, is going to be a bridge, right? So your APIs are only going to uh, read and write from the database, okay? So we will be having these uh, APIs for to-dos and users. These are two entities. These are two tables in, in the uh, database, right? One is to-dos table, one is users table. So we also have APIs for these two. So, so this is how an API will look. Slash to-dos, slash to-dos, slash to-do ID, right? And for users, slash users. So here, uh, uh, API supports multiple uh, methods. You can get post, patch, put, delete. So there are multiple methods that you can do to uh, do in a REST API model, okay? So basically, HTTPS that you see is a protocol that is used to communicate with the APIs. So HTTP is what we, we are using. HTTPS is HTTP with security. Right, so HTTP is upgraded version is HTTPS. So um, what we will do is we will develop these APIs and have it in our server, Node.js server. And in the browser, we will call these APIs as needed to render our UI, to show our application. So this is what we are going to do. So uh, to-dos get will get all the to-dos, to-do slash to-do ID get will, that will get only that particular to do whichever ID is passed here, only those to do details will be retrieved. To do's post is to create a to do. To do slash to do ID patch is to update a to do. So there are two methods. One is put and another is patch. Put patch, what patch does is patch just updates a single column, but put has to update the entire. So put is like uh, updating the entire. Uh, 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 row, but patch can update only a particular columns in a row. So that is the difference between put and patch. And we also have delete. So slash to do slash to do ID delete to delete a particular to do. So these are all the to do's APIs that we are going to build. And these are users API. We have to sign up. For sign up, we need to do create user. So users post and we have to log in. For login, we have to do get users. So we will do get slash users get. Login. So these are all the APIs. And if you guys remember the non-functional requirement, I told about basic security. Any application has to have basic security so that your data is secure. Since all these are user scoped, very user level data, it should have any some kind of authentication. So authentication is nothing but a server recognizing you as a valid user. That is what authentication in layman's terms. Some system has to identify you as a as a valid user because there are hackers. You know there are hackers in web that tries to um, get your data, that tries to misuse your data. So a server has to um, identify you as a uh, legitimate user. So for that, we are going to have a simple type of authentication, basic auth. Basic auth is nothing but combination of a username or password, uh, some identification for user and a password. In this case, we are going to have user email and password, right? So any doubts with what APIs we are going to build? Uh, okay, if not, I can just press it. So, Enough of the slides. 
I am going to show you the APIs that I have built. Okay. So this is a tool called Postman. Okay. Postman is a tool to uh, test APIs. For any software needs testing, you need, you, there is a development phase, there's a testing phase. You need to test out, you need to make quality assurance for anything that you build, right, in this world. So similar to that, you have to test out your software. So Postman is a tool that is used to test your APIs. So here I have uh, these APIs. So user sign up, uh, user to do list, user to do create, user to do update, and user to do get, right? So, and this is the basic authentication I, I was talking about. So this is the username, uh, user email and password combination. If you don't pass this, I hope the server is running. So I will also show what are all these, what are all running here. So I am running the APIs here in the port 3000 in my local host. And I am running uh, the front end in localhost 1994, right? So I will I, I will come back to the structure, but uh, I will just try to get uh, list all my list all my APIs first without the authentication. So this is the authentication error that is passed from the server. So when I try to not when I try to get the data without authentication header. So this is called as request header. Uh, so basically if you select this, it will pass a header to this request to the server, right? So if you don't pass this header, I have written my API in such a way that it will throw an error saying authentication is, authentication is required. Okay, so this is to like basically tell what authentication is. So yeah, so these are all the APIs that I have built. So let's quickly go to the code structure now. So this is my entire application. Uh -huh. There are so many files. So basically, uh, yeah, this is the entry file, okay? So in in the node, I I think you, most of you guys are new to Node.js. That is okay. I will give a very brief uh, uh, introduction about Node.js. As I said, Node.js is runtime environment of uh, JavaScript. Just like Python, like for example, if you do Python version, yeah, okay. If you do Java you will have Java installed in your, it will say Java install. Similarly, you have to install Node. Node is a soft, Node is, uh, Node will be available to download from the web, you can try to Google it. So if you download Node, you can run any JavaScript files. So previously, before this, JavaScript was only able to be run in browsers, but this is a way to run JavaScript in servers or, systems right so for example console.log is to print uh, something hello world okay if I, if I do this it will just print hello world okay if i for example hello world.js console.log Hello world. Okay. So what I can do is I can just this is the syntax to run node space file name hello world.js. This will say hello world. Okay. So this is a very uh, simple introduction to node.js. So if uh, uh, every node project will have a file called package.js on. So every node project is a package. Okay. So for this package, the name is to do application. It will have all the details version, whether it is private uh, package or public package, the scripts tied to it, the dependencies. Okay. So these are all uh, reside here in, in a file called package.json. So here in this uh, section, these are the dependencies. As you see, 
one is express express is a framework to run web applications in using node js it is to write node node js web applications it is a framework so i hope uh, some would, might have heard django in python or spring boot in java uh, yeah so express is uh, express is uh, serving the same purpose for javascript node js so we have express as our dependency and mysql as our dependency nothing nothing else we have these two dependencies and we also need uh, we also need yarn yarn is the package manager for node js so we have node installed yarn installed NP npx is uh, another uh, package so this is to like uh, run this is to run any other package so and then we have mysql so mysql is already installed in my system uh, yeah so all these are installed so i have node i have yarn so yarn what uh, what i have to do with yarn is if i run yarn what it will do is it will install all the packages all the dependencies that i mentioned here that is needed for this project in a folder called node modules so these are the node um, these are the dependencies that are required for this project right so um why there are these many folders is uh, this will install all the dependencies including the child dependencies so express to do app is dependent on express and mysql these two packages will be dependent on so many other child and so on so it will build a dependency tree and probably install all the packages that are needed so that's why the node modules is this big so uh, so uh, yeah so once this is done uh, we have installed the uh, we have installed all the dependencies once this is done i have run i have written a script called start this is to start the server so if you see here node i have written node dot slash so this basically searches for an index.js file so this is the starting point of my web application so this is where uh, this is where the server is going to going to be started so if i uh, how i have run this application is i did yarn start so this in turn runs node dot slash so this is the entry point so first these this method will be executed start server and then this will search for the port process dot env dot port so process every node uh, uh, runtime is uh, mapped to a process right so process is a very uh, operating system basic term so everything in computer is a process so similar to that uh, node uh, this is a process that is currently running uh, this particular thing is a process to list all the processes you have a command called ps which will list all the processes if you see here it is currently running this process right yarn start the one that i gave right so um, and every process is mapped to its own environment variables so i have defined all my environment variables in a file called config.env i have defined port mysql host username password db and i, I also configured few other uh, mysql configs and client url okay so basically if anything that is configurable should be uh, uh, returned in the config.env file this this holds this will hold all the env variables in it so what uh, once this is done uh, you just have to first set up the database so to set up the database you already have mysql uh, mysql installed uh, right so so this is how you require mysql and you create a connection pool with all the configs so host mysql requires host user password and database so i have mentioned all this here you just have to create a connection pool right so i am doing this 
once the server is this is the very first step i am doing in this start server once this is done i am starting the express server so express uh, method call will start the express server so yes so uh, you can write a, a, the entire application in index.js file but the problem is it will go probably around 2000 or 3000 lines at one point you won't be able to maintain it so any project should be written as modules it should be split so uh, if you see here i have my have my root file here but all the other files in the respective folders i'll come back to this but uh, just know about how to write modular code you have to write everything as a module module is nothing but uh, files so you have to write specific <coughs> sorry <coughs> sorry so you have to write specific things in the specific files and you shouldn't clutter everything in a single file so that is what is called as modular coding. So, so once the connection is created here, I start the server. And then if you see here, I have to do router, users router. And I have something called as auth check middleware. And I, uh, I am doing app.use. So I'll come, I'll come to this one by one. So the first thing will be routers. So I am defining what are all the routes. So route is nothing but uh, the APIs that I'm going to write. So slash to those is one route, slash users is another route, okay? So for both of these, I have created two separate files. One is to do routes.js, users routes.js. In to do routes, same APIs only I have defined here, slash to do list, slash ID, post, Batch and edit. So these are all the APIs that I have. I have here as well. So I have defined all these. So once once routes are defined, you have to map every route with a controller. So this is how you write uh, a Node.js application. So you will be having a route. From route, you should have a controller for every route, and from controller, you should have a model for every every controller. A model will ultimately talk with DB. So route itself can directly talk. You cannot have all the code in index.js itself. But as I said, it will not be maintainable. So you have to, your data communication will be from route, controller, model, and DB. So um, I have my routes here and all the controllers in controllers folder. Here are the to do controllers. So for every action, I have um, uh, I have a controller here, which I have exported. So this is how you export methods. This is how you export uh, uh, methods of a module in no JavaScript. So to do list controller, to do details controller. So for every method, I have uh, uh, one controller, and I have mapped it to the uh, route. If you see the controllers, I have every single method for uh, every single method in model for every controller so model model is the one that ultimately talks with db is what i said right so if you see here you will see the queries query select star from select star insert into update delete so all these are queries so ultimately you are talking with your node.js application is talking with the db your node.js application is making some changes in db or retrieving from db but you have to do it you shouldn't do it directly there is a structure to it root controller model db understood uh, so yeah so this is how i have written i also told about the middle verse right so middleware is nothing but a middle method, uh, uh, a method that should be run for every action. So basically you are writing, uh, writing code for usability. You don't have to call it every, you don't have to write or you don't have to duplicate the code, right? So what you do is you write in one middleware method. So here, if you see, I have a file called auth.middleware. So for every action, you have to make sure that the uh, the authentic uh, uh, username password authentication is passed in the headers. 
So this is something that happens for every API request. So what you do is you write it as a middleware. You see here, I have auth check middleware. This basically what it does is it takes, so it basically takes the authorization header. If it is, if there is no authorization header, it, what it will do is it will return and hand, uh, handle unhauthir. So it will return message authentication here. That's what we saw here, right? So once the authentication header is there, what it will do is it will first split. So how the authentication header will pass will be passed is it will be passed like this basic A B C D E F G H. So this A B C D E F G H will be encoded, A64 encoded. So this refers to the authentication schema, and this is the act actual authentication encoded key. Okay, we have to check whether the schema is correct. There is also a schema called bearer. So we have to check whether the schema is correct, or else we what we do is we pass wrong auth schema. So if I do a bearer token and try to do, yeah. So authentication, that is a, this is generic error, but if you see the server, it will print wrong auth schema. Uh, I'll do once more. It prints wrong auth schema because I have added the log here, console.error wrong auth schema. So once this check is done, we have to make, get user email and password. So A to B, what it does is it, decodes the encoded key. This is a built-in method that decodes a string of base64 encoded data into bytes. So uh, B to A, B to A is the method that encodes it. Like for example, uh, if my email is Ravan at test.com and if my password is test test, for example, this is how I will encode it. And this is the uh, encoded key. Now I have to decode it like this. So if I decode it, again, I will get the same thing. So what I have done here is I have taken, I have split. So there is a method in JavaScript called dot split if it colon. I have split it and taken the email and password separately. Okay. So once that is taken, I have, I am doing email rejects check. So email rejects is Regular regex is nothing but regular expression. You are, uh, this is to make sure that your string follows a pattern. Email should be of this pattern only, right? Like it has to follow abc at abc.com. It has to follow this pattern. Anything else is not considered as a valid email. So let's say uh, you pass uh, PQR, for example. You will get the same authentication error invalid value for user email because i have added the log here so this is how this is what your middleware has to do it has to make every check just to make uh whether it has to make sure that the request is valid so it has to make every check and if the check is valid it has to proceed to the next one so once that is done we have to make sure that this user is there in our db like for example uh, these are all our users. I have around uh, four, four test users, okay? PQR, PQR, Shaman, ABCD, and Gmail. I am going to pass uh, XYZ at gmail.com. I am trying to get to do's for this user. If I try to get, it again will say authentication error. It will say user not found. So what it does, what it has done in the background is it has run this query. So let's start from users where email equal to xyz dot at, uh, at uh, gmail.com. So it has run this query. Okay. And if you see here, there is no, no zero rows affected. It has no result. Because of this, uh, we send back the response that authentication error, same error, and we print that the user is not found. So once every check is passed, so we also make sure the user details is correct. And the last check is target password has to be the same as the password that we have stored in our D. So 
In databases, we shouldn't directly store the password. For example, I just typed test test. So this is not a good practice to store the password directly. So what we do is we encrypt or we in, we inflate the we inflate the string and then store the inflated string so that uh, it's not obvious for someone that it is a password. And of course, there is a column called password, and you can also de you can also decrypt it if you have access to the code. But if you do not have access to the code, and if some hacker only accesses the database, it will be difficult for the person because you, he won't know what logic to what logic to use to decrypt. This. So it's always better to store passwords like this. So let's say I uh, I think for pqr at gmail.com, the password is test. I will check that. Show password. I think it will list the todos. Yes, it will list. Let's say I do test something. Again, the, the error will be authentication error, but this time the error will password check is failed. But before request, it says listing all to do's because the password check is passed. So that is, this is the password check. Okay. So once everything is passed, we finally, uh, one. so this is, this is how the code is executed. It will first go, uh, it will just come here, API to do's. Since it matches, since this uh, API matches this route, it will come here, it will do all the auth authentication check once since everything is passed it will go to to do router okay so this to do router for this to do router it will then check which method it is get it is a get method or slash not slash id so it will go to to do list controller and then this here it comes so this is the log that you saw listing all to do's for user with email pqr at gmail.com so if i Try with correct password. Yeah. So it will, it will log one more time. So this is where it came. And then now it has come here. So I uh, I haven't talked about the await. If you see here, it is say it says async await. So JavaScript is a single threaded language. Uh, you can Google about what single threaded language later, but then uh, it does only one operation at a time. But then it can be made. It can be made to do uh, multiple operations also. So this, when you mention that this is an await, uh, it means that this get all to dos is going to take some time. Okay. So if there is no await here, what if what will happen is this will this will be executed. This execution this won't wait. So it will just pass. Undefined as the undefined as the result without waiting for 20, line number twenty. So if you mention that this you need await here, it will wait in this execute till the execution is complete. So this is a concept called promises. Promises in JavaScript. You can read about this, right? Async await, right? So. This will go here, get all to do's, and this will run the query. Since reaching the MySQL connection and running the query will take some time, we uh, we have this as an asynchronous function. Okay. So once this query is run, so I am just going to run this query. So where is this user ID? How, how did we get this user ID? Is we did this right object model where. In the last step, what we did is we uh, what whatever we got here as the user details from the DB, we assigned it to something called as request talk meta. Okay, so from there only we are uh, get, we are getting the user ID. User ID is basically this this ID four five six seven for eqr at gmail.com. It is five. Okay, so. What it will do is it will run this query, select star from to do's where user ID equal to five. Right? There's only one, one to do associated with this. That's why the result is also this only. To do's, only one record. 
array of one. This uh, actually JavaScript object notation here. This is a key. This is the value. So value is of type array. Array, uh, array of objects. So inside this, there is only one object with all the columns: ID, user ID, title, description, completed. Right. So this is how the list to dos work. I just gave a walkthrough for the list to dos. So similarly, only everything works. Like for example, to dos list to dos. Let's say I have to uh, individually uh, get the to do details. What I will do is I will pass this as a para. Now it will only on, only an object will be passed with all the details. Okay. So this API is get to do details. So what it does is previously it queried with user ID, but since now it we have passed the to do ID itself, it will query with ID equal to to do ID. Only one record will be passed. I am I am responding it as single object. Okay. And then uh, for post, so get you need you need not pass any any body. For post, you have to pass the body. Like for example, let's say I want to create a new to do. Mm, okay. Finish the webinar on time. Is our is my to do? Let's say. Okay. And get good sleep. For example. So if I run this, so it says successfully created to do. Here it says creating to do details for user with body. So it has come here to do create controller. From the request, it has got the body, and then it it checks whether there's title. So title is a mandatory field. If you did not pass the title, for example. I let's say I don't pass the title. It will say invalid missing fields because I am checking whether the title is there or not. If if it is valid payload, if it is not valid payload, it will say status 400. 400 means bad request. These are all few status uh, HTTP status codes. 200 is okay or success. Okay. 201 is created. Usually. Uh, responded for post. 400 is bad request. Something wrong with the request. 401 is unauthorized. Or un un unauthenticated. Okay. And 403 is unauthorized. So that is two things. One is authentication and another is authentic authorization. Authentication is server identifying you as a valid user. Authorization is server deciding whether you have uh, access to that resource. You can be a valid user, but in a system, you will only have uh, few privileges. Okay, you can only read. You can only read in some uh, applications. You cannot write anything. You cannot create anything. So those kind of checks happens in authorization. So these are all common uh, status quo. So since our payload was correct previously we passed we passed both finish the webinar on time and finish webin we also passed description but we are not making the description check so we since we passed the title properly it did not come here this if, if check failed and it instead went here so what it did is it i take it took the user details uh, it took the user id from request meta dot user details so as I said, this request dot meta is assigned in the auth check model bar that I showed. So that happens for all the requests. So it passes that and, and also the body. So if you see here, user ID and to do payload. What I'm doing is I'm doing an insert into insert into to do's, all the columns, user ID, title, description. If the description is not passed, we just pass the null. And then by default, completed is zero because uh, if we, you cannot complete it, complete a to-do task when you create it, right? So by default, it is zero. Zero means not completed. Okay, and then it uh, successfully uh, runs this query and it comes back here. And yeah, that's how it works.
so that is also user user sign up i let's say i want to sign up uh, like for example let's say i want to sign up again as pqr obviously i sometimes people forget right people forget and sign up second time on the same application so if i try to do that it says user already exists with error status 409 409 means error conflicts indicates that request could not drop it because conflict in the request right so it's it's so once this is the this is seen i will probably try to sign up with some other email mm, maybe cdg and yeah successfully created user with email abc at gmail.com same here so this what i basically ran insert into users uh, and then uh, ran the query in the users table so if you see here in the users table yeah this is the new record that is created 11 recently yeah so abcd at gmail.com and the password is this password is also encrypted right so uh, the encryption process is where it happens is so If you remember, we have two methods here. One is the auto check middleware. This middleware is run for all the uh, to do specific routes. If you see here, app.use API to do's for all the to do specific uh, routes. And if you go to users router, you will see auth check middleware uh, for get, but for post, there's a different middleware, auth user sign up middleware. So what, what this does is same steps only, checks the auth header, checks the auth schema, uh, checks the regular expression, uh, checks if there is already existing users, if there's already existing users, user already exists. That's what we saw now, right? And then what it here does, does is it deflates the, deflates in other words is, Compress, compress the password and then stores, uh, stores it in request.meta as email and password. So this is what we store in the DB. Right. So probably I'll also show the user to-do list. Now, sorry, users list. I don't think I have users list. Okay. I will probably do it. Okay. okay. I'm trying to get so without obviously without authentication it will fail if i do a get it will say user email obviously you shouldn't send the password then then if you send the password then browser will browser it is open to uh, the password will be open to the browser which is not uh, actually good so api should not include the password and password is also not needed so you also have to decide which data is needed which is not needed in the api so yeah, uh, abcd at gmail.com, that is also there. Okay, I think the password is wrong. What did I give Test, test. Yeah, test, test. So abcd at gmail.com is also there. So these are all the APIs. Uh, I think it's almost 646. So what I'll do is, I will quickly show. So now we have the APIs ready. All these APIs are developed. Now it's time to build the UI. So for UI, it's going to be very simple. It's only two pages. One is the user dashboard page and to do's page. The user dashboard page will allow you to log in or sign up. And to do's page is going to allow you to list the to do's, delete the to do's, add a new to do. So very simple. Right. So how I have okay. So how I have returned the UI is yeah. So I have a new I have a folder called client. Inside client, I have three folders: CSS, images, JavaScript, and I also have index.html. So for any web application, the starting point is index.html. For any Node.js server application, starting point is index.js. So remember this. So here I have all the head, uh, all the, so basically I am linking all the CSS files uh, 
uh, I am link uh, and then I am also linking something called a script type. So this this is basically I am linking the app dot js file, which is going to do all the logic. So if you see here, I have mentioned it as type equal to module. So if you don't want to mention this, this won't work because uh, in browser JavaScript. No, uh, you cannot write module system directly. You cannot write JavaScript files as modules directly. So for to main, to write to enable it that you have to mention this as type equal to module. So um, if you see the UI is I have H1 tag. H1 is basically header tag. Uh, I do not have anything here empty. I have a button logout, which is display none. So I can show you the UI and then. Oh, so, you remember it is running in to do UI is running here in the 99. Yeah, so the to do's list. So if you see here, uh, the to do's list uh, title is. Yeah, so this is the, this is the entry point. App.js is the entry point. If you see here. We have added a event list document dot content loader. Once the content everything is loaded, it will call this the init application. Here, what it does is there is a storage called session storage for every browser session. So it tries to get a, a key called to do list basic auth. If it is not, so basically, uh, if it is there. We are going to show the list page. If it is not there, we are going to show the login sign up page. So that is the basic logic. If the user is uh, already signed in, we are going to show this list page. If the user is not signed in, we are going to show the dashboard page. So since the first time, obviously the user won't be signed in. We can confirm that uh, session storage. I think it's empty. So it will come here. It will sorry. It will come. Here in this one, line number 22. If you see here, we have render user dashboard. Here we have a template. Uh, so before that, uh, yeah, document query selector app title. We are uh, uh, setting this app title, the to do list. Uh, okay. So if you see here, uh, it, ch it checks whether there's a uh, whether the authentication is present or not. If the authentication is not present, it is going to show the to do list. Plain without anything. I will show you what uh, how it is shown in the uh, to do list page. But yeah, so this is where it is uh, rendered. So all these are DOM commands. So DOM is nothing but document object model in HTML. If you if, and JS, if you are learning HTML and JS, you will come over this. Okay. So um, I am just setting the title here. Once this is done, uh, I am uh, checking the basic auth. Since it is not there, I'm going to render the user dashboard. Here in user dashboard, I have two input buttons, user email, password, and then two buttons, login and sign up. So this is how my, uh, this is how it is going to look. And then I am going to use the same thing, abcd at gmail.com test test. Okay, so let's see what happens. Okay, and then test, test. If you open the network tab here, just kindly watch. I'm going to press login. I am, so there is some, some request that is made. This is nothing but the localhost slash colon 3000 slash API slash users. Basically the users list API that we have written. What is the response? The response. Okay, so we are just uh, okay. We are just taking the two hundred okay, and then yeah. Once this is done, what happened is we are setting the auth key here in the session storage. To do list basic auth we have set right. So once the login is successful. Render user dashboard. We are uh, we are rendering it, and then we we have login click event listener. This 
this these are two buttons login and sign up we have event listeners for both and then we are um, we are making all the email regex check everything here when we are making the api call so this is where we make the api call fetch api users okay so if the password is wrong let's say i log out and come back some random password it will say fail to check fail to log in check the credentials right and the api request is also failed 401 unauthorized you see here is unauthorized authentication okay cool uh yeah now i will log in okay and then i will create a to do yeah, I already have have a good. Uh, yeah, I already have these to dos. Complete the session. Take questions. Okay. So for every plus, I am making a post API call. If you see here, uh, yeah, post local host three thousand API to dos post. I am passing the uh, same uh, uh, payload that I passed in the uh, I, that I passed in the postman so, so I am passing title and I am passing completed as false. If even if you don't pass completed, it will uh, you saw, we saw the query right. It is going to write it as zero. So take questions. So if you to do take questions, complete the session. These are all created now. I'm not passing the description because I do not support it in the UI. I'm not passing the description. So. This is the this is how the create works to do create. Let's say I want to complete a to do. Okay. So if I click on it, what I'm making is I'm making a call patch API to do 33. So here the ID is 33. And right now it's completed is zero. If I refresh, it will change it as one because the request is a success. So what I passed is I passed completed as to true and say successfully updated to. I can also delete it. Like I since I completed it, I will delete it. So if you see here, API call is delete, request method is delete and 33. And right now the 33 is there. If I refresh, it will be gone. Okay. So I haven't implemented the update where you can update the title. This won't work. I haven't implemented. And yeah, I also haven't implemented the description uh, support. So, um, so if, uh, so, yeah, I'm not sure if you guys noticed. If I delete, it's the UI is keeping up, uh, updating again and like without any, without refreshing. If you did, you guys see that? So I didn't refresh the page. But I can like keep adding uh, complete the session. So if I add it without refreshing, without the page refreshing, it keeps adding. Uh, without the page refreshing, it updates it. Without the ref without refreshing, it deletes it. So this is called as Ajax, asynchronous JavaScript and XML. So what we are doing is we are without refreshing the page, we are just making API calls and updating parts of the application. This is a single page. If you see me keenly, this is a single page. In the single page, we saw we showed a user dashboard for login and sign up. The same page we are showing to do list for uh, uh, to do list for this uh, email. So if you see the email, now we have for ABCD at Gmail. So how we achieve this is for every change, I run the method again. So that is this concept called recursion, right? Function calling itself. So I do this for every uh, action. Right. So here I have uh, my delete handler. So for every delete button, I am tying it to delete to do handler. So once once I once I delete it, what I do is I again do a render to do list. So this started from render to do list. So and then it, the method calling itself. So from here, it goes to here, delete to do handler, and it, call, it again calls itself. So this is rec recursion, right? 
So since I'm doing this again and again, I don't have to refresh the page. So I can also refresh the page. Same, same data is only going to be there, but refreshing the page means again going to server. And again going to server means the performance is going to be slow. So, so that is the uh, power of single page application mm -hmm. where you can keep updating parts of uh, parts of the page just by making API calls without disturbing other parts. I'm not disturbing logout. A logout is always there. So if as I add something, the logout is always going to be there. It's not going to be disturbed. So this is the uh, power of single page application. So yeah, probably this is going to spill over a bit, but yeah, no problem. So I have my code public in on GitHub. You can, I still haven't covered uh, some parts of the front end code. You can obviously go and explore it. So yeah, we have developed these two pages site right, with the help of APIs. Yeah, now the features enhancement ideas for you guys. I think uh, you guys followed up to this point patiently and you you ha you would have liked the application to some extent, did not like. So now it will be your turn to explore the code and build more features out of it. So some ideas that I can say is better user experience and user interface. This is okay. This even this I don't like. Uh, to be frank, this looks okay, right? You can obviously uh, explore this and come up with your own design and enhance the UI. Complete the edit feature. We have the API ready, right? We have the patch API ready and we can update the title. Now your task would be to complete this by complete this edit feature in the front end. Just have to make the API call similar to other API calls and complete this feature. Introduce admin scope. So if you see only you, that logged in user can list those to do's. You can introduce a new entity in the DB called admins, uh, or you can in the users itself, you can have a column called role. It says user and admin, anything. You can design the DB anyway. You can also introduce admin that can, who can list all the users, okay? You can introduce adding description. This doesn't support adding description. You can introduce adding description for to do. Rebuild the application with popular frameworks. So as you saw, this was all tough. Writing code in vanilla JavaScript without a framework is tough because you have to keep re-rendering after every state update. So a framework like Vue or Angular takes care of all this out of the box. So you can probably try to build the same application in any of these frameworks once you have learned it. You can add unit tests for the entire application. Uh, read about unit tests. It's basically testing every single part of your, every single line of your code. And you can also deploy it in any online platforms like AWS, Heroku, or Vercel. I haven't deployed it and showing it in the local host. You can probably deploy it. There are free platforms also where you don't have to pay or you have to pay very minimal. Uh, so you can try that as well. So to do all this, what you can do is you can con you can go to this GitHub repository, sign up as if you don't have a GitHub account, GitHub account would be the starting point of your software yeah. development career. You should have a GitHub account if you do not have up until now, you can sign up a new GitHub account, clone this repo, and you can start exploring this. You can, as I said, you can create issues, create, uh, and then you can create pull requests for those issues and you can tag me. I can check those uh, work if you're interested and if you're, if you're keen to learn. So these are all few ideas. Yeah. And the key takeaways, full stack web development, how to do it from start to end through the entire software development life cycle and present and future of API driven development with distributed systems. Uh, so one API and multiple clients, I said, right? Multiple clients in mobile web. So that is the future. So you would have, that would be another key takeaway. Tools and processes followed in industry. These are all the ones that I showed are the industry standards of doing things. You, you have a GitHub repo, you commit all the code there. 
uh, you you write code in each folders as modules. These are all industry standards of doing things, industry coding standards. And present single page, single page applications and legacy multi-page applications. I said, right, single page application, just changing the parts of the code by making API calls and multi-page applications for every page, you have to reach the server and get all the JavaScript, CSS, HTML from the server. So that is the difference. Open source contributing, so you can clone this repo. If you if you contribute to this repo, you are an open source contributor, right? You can you just contributed to my repo. You can start with that. Uh, there are lack millions of uh, public repositories that you can contribute to. You can learn coding from those repositories also. 